Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. My name is Vivian and in today's video we're going to talk about all of the books that I read in the month of December. I'm going to put this out there as quickly as possible. I am sick. I have the cold. I do sound a little bit nasally. If you guys can hear it, I apologize. I've pushed this video off for as long as I can. I've been sick for almost a week now. I got sick while I was on vacation. I really wanted to film this as soon as I came back but I sounded really really sick so I really needed to get this video up today so I need to film. Once again, I apologize if you guys can hear it. If I'm a little bit low on energy and if I'm really lethargic I'm on a lot of meds so it's been a while since I filmed a video if you guys don't know all the videos that I filmed and uploaded before this have been pre-filmed two three weeks ago thankfully for this month actually last month because I'm filming this in January I do not have a lot of books that I read I read a total of 10 books I have seven physical books and I have three Kindle books and I'm gonna talk to you guys through all of the books most of these books are on reading vlogs so I do not want to explain too much about it if you guys want to see more in-depth live reactions you guys can check out those reading vlogs i will link all of them in the description box that being said let's get started with this december wrap up i read caught up by liz tomford this is the first book i read and i have a dedicated reading vlog for this book this is the third book of the windy city series and this follows kai who is a single dad and who's the girl's name Miller is the daughter of the coach of the MLB team that Kai is in and she's this really famous baker slash pastry chef but she took a break in the summer and so her dad asked her for a favor to nanny Kai's kid because Kai really needs a nanny and they kind of fell in love through the course of that. But what I really liked about this book was even though it was in slow burn there was this instant physical attraction in the beginning but I really liked how there was still a lot of tension going on throughout the book even though they fell for each other really quickly. I really like how they got to know each other and I really like that there's character depth in this and I really liked that the dad wasn't this overbearing protective type of person. I also really liked Kai's kid. I don't really like kids in books but this one I really enjoyed. I did rate this 4.5 I think. I really liked Kai's character. I felt like he was very realistic with his decisions because a lot of the things that he thinks about he puts his kid into perspective. I was really happy that I started off with such a good book. Then I read Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. Is this my only this is my only fantasy book for this month i don't know why but december was a very very difficult reading month i didn't really want to pick up a lot of things and this was my only only fantasy read this i ended up rating 3.5 and you guys don't know this book is a spin-off standalone of the kingdom of the wicked series by the same author and this follows the prince of envy the kingdom of the wicked series follows prince of wrath this is a standalone so you do not have to read any other book other than this and i don't believe you need to read the kingdom of the wicked series to read this book i did not i didn't feel like i needed to read the trilogy so i jumped right into it my initial impression of this book was that the world building and the pacing of the book was kind of difficult to get into in the first like 100 pages i feel like because this was a spin-off the author kind of didn't really put too much effort in the world building because she probably did a lot of that in the original series, the King of the Wicked series. It lacked explanations with the things that were going on and the fantasy world just wasn't built well enough throughout the whole series. The romance was great, but I also didn't really feel that much chemistry with the characters. I felt like it picked up really, really well like at the latter half of the book and I had a lot of fun in the latter half of the book. I flew through those last 300 pages. It was really good. The beginning was hard, so I didn't rate this high. Was it 3.5? Sorry, it was a 3.25 according to my story graph. So yeah, not super highly rated, but still had a lot of fun. Next, I read a Kindle book. I read Watch Your Mouth by Candy Steiner. This is the second book in the Kings of the Eyes series and I read the first one. I don't remember when but I didn't really like that one. It was a three star read I think and I really like Candy Steiner by the way. I loved her Red Zone Rivals series which is her football romance one and this is hockey romance series and basically with Watch Your Mouth you're following the sister of the main character of the first book. I don't remember the FMC's name but the MMC's name is Jackson and Jackson is a teammate of Vince's hockey team. One day he saw her crying. He offered to bring her in a road trip and they go on this journey. It was less of a sports romance and more of like a road trip type of romance. Even though there was a lot of tension and a lot of chemistry with this book and so much more than the first half of the book, I was so interested to see how it was going to end. 
but I really didn't like the ending portion, especially how Vince found out that they were together and the way they solved their problems because of that. It was very easily wrapped up. I didn't feel like there was a lot of depth with the character development in that part as well as the parents' involvement in this whole thing because the problem with the FMC is that she has been neglected all her life since her brother is the one in the spotlight. I just wanted to see more of her parents. I wanted to see more of their interactions. I didn't see any of that. And yeah, that's why this book ended up being a 3.75. I really, really, really liked the first half and I really liked their romance. Their chemistry was amazing. And then I just felt disappointed with the ending. So yeah, I read Thrive by Kristen Becker Ritchie next. This is the fourth book in the Addicted series, but this is the sixth book, I think, in the whole Addicted World series. Basically, this follows Lily and Lo's story. If you guys don't know this whole series, you follow two addicts. Lily is a sex addict, Lo is an alcoholic. They kind of use each other to hide their addictions from their families, but somehow they just get found out and they follow this whole journey together. And this one is the fourth book of their story. In the middle, there are stories of the other siblings and the Calloway family. For this book, this story coincides with the story of Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower. And so that's why I didn't really like this one because it felt very repetitive with a lot of the things that were going on with those two books. It was just in a different perspective. So I didn't enjoy this as much because of that but I did rate it 3.5 it wasn't such a bad book but I wasn't super into the story and with a lot of the Lily and Low books I wasn't into it in the beginning but I get a grasp of it by like the end of the book I still ended up reading the next book after this one I'm just gonna talk about it I didn't read this after immediately I read it I think a week after that but the next book I read is Addicted After All which is the seventh book of the Addicted World series this book I rated 4.5 I think this book really solidified Lily and Low's relationship together and I really liked seeing them together in this one. At first I really didn't like their relationship but I felt like now with this book I can understand why they're so important. How their characters have grown so so much from the beginning of the book. I could see that their relationship was just very meaningful and helpful towards each other so yeah I had fun with this one. This one was a 4.5. After reading Thrive I read oh I read a Kindle book again another hockey romance. This month was a little bit of a hockey romance kick. I read Unsteady by Peyton Kareen. This book was a three star read. Why didn't I like this one? I don't really remember much about the plot to be honest. I just know that it was a hockey romance. The FMC has a bit of a darker past I think. She was dealing with anxiety or was the guy dealing with anxiety? I think the MMC was dealing with anxiety, either anxiety or PTSD from one of like his injuries. They kind of met through this one skating rink that the guy goes to for volunteering and she was there because her little brother goes to that skating rink. She's a skater and he's a hockey player. I think they go to the same school. This book I didn't really enjoy mainly because I couldn't find any depth with the characters but I felt like the plot with the FMC, something to do with her family, is lacking a lot of explanation. It didn't really end very well in my opinion. And then I read The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon and this book had the same problem with Watch Your Mouth where I did enjoy the first half and then I didn't enjoy the latter half. The third act conflict really 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 pissed me off and I really didn't like it and that's why this whole book went down like a star reading. It was a 3.5 at the end of this. It was necessary. I don't like third act conflicts full stop so if a book has a very bad third act conflict I just don't like it. I don't want to continue reading it. That's what happened with this book. I did end up finishing it but I felt like it was just so hard to get through the last few pages. I thought it was about exes getting back together so I thought it was a second chance romance but apparently it's about two co-workers who don't like each other and the people who surround them think they have good banter even though they actually don't really like each other but they end up having to pretend to be exes and they open up this podcast called The X Talk. And I read The Story Live of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This is my second Gabrielle Zevin book following Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I did enjoy this one. I really liked her writing. I just felt like there was something to do with her writing. It really pulls me into the book. That really makes me really like the characters even though they're so flawed. You go through a lot of years of his life in this really short book but I felt like it was very meaningful. You also get some side characters in this and I really liked seeing their backstory too. So I had a lot of fun with this book. There was this plot twist I wasn't expecting and I cried I'm pretty sure. I did tear up with this book and I just felt like it was so wholesome. Also didn't really explain what this book is about. Once again really bad at this but the story of AJ Vickery follows AJ Vickery. His wife recently passed away. He owns this bookstore that is about to go bankrupt and he lost this really special edition copy of his favorite book and he just feels like his life is going down the drain until one day he finds a baby in his bookstore 
four. Well, not baby because she's two years old, but there's a note on the kid that tells him to take care of this kid. And that really changed the trajectory of his life from then on. You get to see his character change from being a really grumpy guy to being understanding and being a loving father. And I really liked seeing his growth from all of that. I just really felt like this book was super good, super nice, and super sweet. The last physical book I read is Carrie Soto's Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this book because Hailey Pham rated it five stars and I was doing a whole video reading Hailey Pham's five star reads. This book follows Carrie Soto who is a tennis player, a retired tennis player, but during her retirement she realizes a player is going to be surpassing her world record and so Carrie Soto goes back to play tennis once again and you get to see her life story from when she was young up until she won the world record until now when she's trying to win back her world record. It's a very insightful story about a character who grew up knowing that she's going to be an amazing player but I also didn't feel like it was super riveting compared to like Malibu Rising for example. So this book was a 4.25 and I did have fun with the book. I did have fun seeing Carrie Soto's world and seeing the way that she thinks about things. I did have fun. I love her writing but it wasn't my best read of hers and so 4.25 and then the last book I read is a Kindle read and that's The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This is the second book of the Vancouver Storm series and you guys know the first one is Behind the Net which went crazy on TikTok and booktube. Again I'm very bad with character names so I don't remember the character names but I do remember that this story is basically fake dating. MMC is a teammate of the first book's MMC and then the FMC of this book is the sister of the FMC in the first book. Does that make sense? FMC works part time in the hockey team as a physicist. One of those people who like massages the players after a game because they're probably really tight in their muscles and stuff like that. I don't know and I forgot the exact career name. They're fake dating because there's a new recruit in the team and the recruit apparently is the ex of the FMC and she really wanted to make him jealous so she used the MMC who actually secretly has been in love with her for a very long time since high school. So this book I rated 4.25 stars. The reason why it's not like a 4.5 or a 5 star is because up until now I still have yet to think about the book. It really didn't leave that much of an impression on me. I know a lot of people really like this series but for me it's not amazing. It's not groundbreaking so yeah it was a really good read. I really like the chemistry and the romance. It's a lot of pining and a lot of tension and a lot of groveling and I really liked seeing the MMC really really fall in love with her. It was just so so good. That part I really liked and obviously I am a sucker for fake dating so I love this trope so so much and this book really did such a good job with the fake dating trope. This book was a 4.25 and that's about it. This was my third hockey romance book by the way so that really shows how I am in a hockey romance kick in December. Yeah those are my 10 books that I read in December. It wasn't a lot of books this time around but I did have a lot of fun with most of them. I was in a little bit of a reading slump by the end of December and I think I'm in a reading slump now to be honest. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and watching me talk about these books. But yeah, I'm gonna let you guys go now. I'm gonna take a rest because I feel like my throat is starting to get a little bit sore. So I am going to go now. Hopefully I'll see you guys in my other videos and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!